hope everyone is having a good week and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the unsolved disappearance of Brandon Swanson. If this interests you, I hope you stick around, leave a like, or let me know what I should talk about next. Now let's get into the video. The case of Brandon Swanson keeps me up sometimes just wondering what happened because as much as we can speculate, they never found a body leaving a lot of questions up for debate. Brandon Swanson was a 19 year old from Minnesota who was said to be just an average teen boy who loved reading and learning especially having a fondness for science. After graduating high school in 2007, he decided to stay home his first year and he had just gotten a certificate in renewable energy and wind turbines from Minnesota West Community and Technical College. After receiving his certificate, he was planning to attend Iowa Western College, almost 250 miles away from his hometown. This was very exciting to him, and so on May 13th, 2008, after the last day of classes, Brandon decided to meet up with some friends at a small house party and celebrate. Not much is said about this party, however, what we do know is that it took place in Lind, about seven miles southwest of his home. Allegedly, Brandon only had a shot of whiskey and maybe a beer. Multiple sources say that when Brandon left the house, he didn't seem intoxicated or acting differently. However, that was coming from other drunk college kids, so who knows how much he really had to drink. Brandon left the house party in Lynn and ended up driving over to Canby, about 35 miles northwest, to celebrate with another friend of his who happened to be moving away for school as well. It's said here that Brandon started drinking a little more, some saying he had maybe two or more drinks, but still didn't seem Seem inebriated in any way. But then again, who really knows? Brandon wasn't a very large young man, being about only 5'6 and 120 pounds, so alcohol could have affected him differently. Brandon ended up leaving the party at around midnight, and after what should have been a simple 30-minute drive, things went awry. Two more things that I want to mention about Brandon is that he was legally blind in his left eye and wore glasses. I'm pretty sure it's the left one, but if I'm wrong, you can let me know. Also, when he was 17, he got a DUI, but had a pretty light sentencing, so now that he was 19, if he were to be caught driving drunk again, he wouldn't be let off that easy. It's believed that rather than taking the straight route home on Route 68, he decided to take back roads to avoid the police and lessen his chance of getting in trouble for driving intoxicated. On his way home, though, he ended up crashing his car into a ditch, and after a couple of attempts calling his friends for help, he ended up calling his parents at around 1.54 a.m. He told his dad that there was nothing to worry about, he wasn't injured, and he just needed help pulling the car back onto the road. Brandon told his dad that he was somewhere between Lind and Marshall, Marshall being his hometown. His dad said that they would be there in about 10 minutes and he knew exactly where he was. After his parents, Annette and Brian, get to where they think their son is, they begin to notice that his car is nowhere to be seen. They continue looking and as they're talking on the phone, they try flashing their lights to see if maybe Brandon can make out where they are or how far they are. They try honking their horn and still Brandon cannot hear or see anything. Neither of them understand what's happening because as they listen on the phone and as Brandon describes where he is, everything is matching up but Brandon is nowhere to be found. He keeps telling them he's on a long stretch of road and there are big open fields. Everyone was frustrated and probably tired. Brian, his father, decides to drive his wife home and then come back to look for Brian alone. Brandon, however, decides to walk towards glowing lights, thinking it's the city of Lind. Instead of just following the main road, Brandon tries cutting through fields, with which his father Brian was understandably quite uncomfortable with. However, they stayed on the phone together the whole way until Brandon mentioned that he could hear running water and saw a fence. At 2.30 a.m., Brandon shouted, oh shit, and after the phone had disconnected, his father tried calling him back six times, and each time the phone went straight to voicemail. There are conflicting stories on if the phone disconnected right after Brandon shouted, oh shit, or if it stayed on the call, but his parents hung up and tried to call him back, so in case he couldn't find his phone in the dark, it would light up and he would be able to see it, being the last time Brandon Swanson would ever be heard from again. And early that morning when his parents went to report him as a missing person, the police informed his parents that it's not uncommon for teenagers to stay out a couple days at a time. However, things would become more complicated after tracking the last place his phone pinged was near Porter, about 30 miles away from where he had claimed he was. With this, they were soon able to locate Brandon's car in a ditch near Taunton. Given the circumstances of him being intoxicated, it being dark, late, and on top of him being practically blind in one eye, it's believed that Brandon had no clue where he actually was and genuinely thought he was closer. So this is where I want to go over the possible theories of what could have possibly happened to Brandon Swan. Swanson. The first one is that many people believe that he could have fallen into the Yellow Medicine River and drowned. 
It wasn't far from where his car was located, and in the phone call between Brandon and his father, there was running water. However, there have been many extensive searches throughout the river and surrounding area, and no body has ever been turned up or found. I also want to mention that this river is not like the Mississippi, it's much smaller and resembles that of a stream and does not have a fast-moving, strong current. And although this year the river was higher than average due to rain, if he happened to drown, then his body would have come up at some point due to gases. Also, after searching with canines, they could trace Brandon's trail out of the river and back onto the road. The second theory is that Brandon may have died from hypothermia. After walking out of the river, he may have ended up freezing because the temperature was only 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty cold on its own, and for somebody just walking around with wet clothes, probably not the best combo. However, as I've mentioned before, they never found a body, and if he were to lay down and pass out, surely the dogs or search teams would have found something, right? Well, that kind of leads us into the third theory, and that is, the reason a body was never found was that Brandon may have been run over by farming machinery from an unsuspecting farmer. Let's say Brandon wandered into a field and laid down and never woke up, whether that be from hypothermia or just being exhausted in general. Planting season for Minnesota is mid to late May, which is right around the time he disappeared. It's not too far-fetched to think that maybe, while well, a farmer was out late, he didn't see the remains and ran them over, and with wildlife, there may have been nothing left to to find. As sad as that may be, it's a possibility. Allegedly, one of the dogs actually had a hit on one of the machines, but the farmer ejected a search and nothing came from it. Some may say that's suspicious, which <laughs> yeah, but it said multiple farmers rejected searches on their land as well. Whether that be because they didn't want a bunch of cops snooping around their property or losing money from people walking through the crops, they just didn't want to be bothered with it, I'm guessing. Farmers are just like that. Also, in my opinion, I don't know if I really believe this one because I live in farm country and we do walkthroughs of fields before any kind of planting in case of something like this. Like, hell, a helium balloon can fuck up a transplanter or get tangled up in farming equipment, so I can't imagine what would happen if you hit, like, a full-on body with clothes, shoes, like everything on them. I just don't see a farmer not paying enough attention to like the field and ignoring a body just laying there. But honestly, I don't see that happening either because I feel like the police would have been called about an intruder on their property afterwards. Like who defends themselves and just automatically hides the body unless Brandon had stumbled onto something that he shouldn't have, like perhaps a farmer was planting a little something other than soybeans and corn and got afraid, shot Brandon and hit his body. Some believe Brandon may have been hit by a car as he was walking down the road and the drivers hit his body. Some believe he was kidnapped and since he was walking near a major highway, it's also possible someone picked him up. The fifth and final theory is that Brandon may have fallen down a cistern or a well, and there's no way to tell since you would have to go over the exact spot he did, and the odds of that are very low. Some people don't believe this because the area, it just doesn't match the geography and why there would be cisterns and wells, and it just, a lot of people don't believe this one, but who really knows? I mean, there's not like there's a better answer. It's just really upsetting because he has to be somewhere, and the fact nothing has ever been found is just so wild to me. I do hope something comes out of this because my heart just goes out to his parents. Being so close to him and even having him on the phone and then just nothing. I feel so terrible and I can't even imagine how they feel. He had a bright future and I don't think he ran away, but something definitely happened that night and I hope the truth comes out sooner than later. Something good did kind of come out of this case because working alongside Annette and Brian Swanson, the parents of Brandon, state legislators and Minnesota law enforcement leaders were able to replace their outdated Missing Children's Act to provide much needed legal protection for missing adults. The new law signed by Minnesota's governor on July 1st, 2009 requires Minnesota law enforcement to report and investigate without delay the disappearance of any person over 18 years of age. Which is kind of a win because if it would have been in place during the time Brandon went missing, maybe they would have been able to find him. I think the cops kind of dropped the ball on this one too. I mean, I, I don't hate cops, but they definitely could have done something a little more. Considering it, it didn't seem like a teenage boy who just wanted to like run away and go do something or get away from his parents. He called his parents for help and they were actively looking for him. And then they go to the police and the police are like, yeah, there's nothing we can do. 
boys are boys, teens are teens, good luck. I wonder if any of them felt guilty afterwards. Like, man, maybe we, maybe we should have done something here. Wonder what would have happened if they went out looking that morning for him instead of waiting. Because if he had fallen down like a cistern, maybe he hurt himself and he wasn't able to get out. They were calling out for help or he knocked himself out and he grabbed down there and starved or died from an injury. And those cops could have been able to find him that night, but instead nothing. There's just so many parts to this case that don't add up in my mind. Like, where is the body? Even if a farmer were to run him over, there would still be something left. There is absolutely nothing of Brandon. They couldn't even find his cell phone. And the doors of his car were all open when the police found it. So that could be a sign of foul play or something. It just seems odd. There's something missing. Something is just not there. That little bit or if... I don't know. I don't know. But I hope it's solved. I hope something comes from it because it's just so sad. And I hope the parents can get closure. The fourth theory is that there could have been foul play. Maybe Brandon watered onto the wrong farmer's property and he had been shot and the body is hidden somewhere. If you guys have any thoughts, leave them in the comments below. I'm going to also have the tip line in the description 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 down below if you take anything from this video just don't drink and drive a lot of this could have been avoided if he had just called his parents first or had a sober friend drive him home i think another reason why this case bothers me so much is that it all could have been avoided but yeah i hope you have an amazing week i am so sorry for my absence life has been really uh life in lately and yeah but i will be back on that grind baby also, I don't want to be a faceless channel. I broke my phone camera and I only have the mic, so hopefully I get a new one soon. Thank you for watching. Leave a like if you liked the video and maybe subscribe if you're feeling up to it. If I left anything out, just let me know. I'd love to fix it. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!